Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part 25 of my fitness database series. If you haven't watched parts 1 through 24 yet, go watch those. And as a reminder, even if you don't care about fitness, these ticks, ticks, these ticks, <laughs> these tips and tricks, I guess ticks is a word for tips and tricks together, right? These ticks are valuable for any type of database that you're building. In fact, I've been reading the comments that you guys have been posting on the previous uh, videos in the series. And a lot of you were telling me, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm able to take these techniques and apply them to my database. Like today, we're gonna start, uh, not start, we're gonna continue working on the food log. We're gonna add little buttons here and we're gonna filter this based on the date that you're searching out, all kinds of cool stuff. So it doesn't matter what database you're working on, this stuff is for you. All right, let's get back to it. All righty, so we got our food log and what I wanna do is up top here, put what the date is and only show one day's worth of values here. Right, because right now it's just showing all of them. We only have one day in here, but you know, if I put stuff in today, because this was from yesterday, if I put something in today, you know, to, uh, dinner again, right? Today's dinner. Then I don't want to see those with these. This is uh, eight ten. This is eight eleven. Right? I want to see just the day I'm on. So I'm going to put a field up top that represents today's date. So I'm going to slide this down, and we'll move this out of the way for now. And I'm just going to put a big text box right up here that's got today's date in it. All right, so grab any one of these, food description's fine. Copy, paste, ooh, copy, paste, there we go. See, it works sometimes. I'm gonna try to do my best to center it, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is, I am going to, let me move this over just a little bit. I'm gonna unbind this guy, right? It's, it's bound to food description right now, so go to all find control source, and we're just gonna delete that. And let's name this field, let's name this log date. Okay, now you could put a default value in here if you want to, but a lot of people, the mistake that they make is they put the control source equal to date. What that does, it says this text box will always be equal to this date and you can't change it. We don't want that because we want the user to be able to change it, right? You wanna be able to go back and look at stuff from last week. So leave the control source empty, it's unbound. Okay, and then if you want to, you could put a default value in here. You don't really need to because we're gonna set this in code when the, uh, when the form opens, but it can't hurt. You could start it off like with today's data and that's fine. All right, I'm gonna format this gently, <laughs> gently. Uh, make it a little bigger. Let's start with a color. Let's go with, uh, no, that's not good. Let's go with like a light purple. Eh, a little bit lighter than that. Maybe that one, okay. Let's center it, let's bold it, let's go a little bit bigger, maybe 22, that's too big. Let's go maybe 20 point, let's go. Eh, a little bit smaller than that. Yeah, that's good right there. And let's format that date, let's go to format, and I am gonna use, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it better. I'm gonna use the format DDDD space YYYY dash MM dash DD. This of course is the ISO date format that I prefer. I'm on a mission to change the whole world to this. I think we've talked about this before. If not, I'll put a link to a video down below. You can watch about it. And this adds the day of the week, nice and big in full letters in the beginning. I like to see the day of the week when I'm, when I'm working with logs like this. I wanna see that this is Monday. If you only want the three digits, you can do that. And of course, I talk about all of this in a lot more detail in my formatting video. I gotta load these up to copy the links anyway. So here's the ISO date format one. And here's my video that covers the different format uh, options. All right, so let's see what that gives us. Save it, close it, open it, and oh, that looks pretty. I like that, that's nice. Okay, now even though we specified a default value in here, I still wanna set this manually in code. So I'm gonna go to the forms on load event. This will work equally well in the on open event. Let me slide that up a little bit, there we go. All right, bring this down over here. And all we're gonna do in here basically is we're gonna say log date, that's our field, equals today's date. It's gonna default when the form loads up to set it to today, all right? So if you make any other design changes, this will override them. Then we're gonna run update filter. What is update filter, you ask? Well, we're gonna have to write it, aren't we? <laughs> so <laughs> private sub update filter, what's this guy gonna do? Well, this is gonna set the filter property of the form equal to show the records from today's date. So it's gotta be greater than or equal to the log date, which is today at midnight, right? And less than log date plus one. So me.filter equals food 
date time is greater than or equal to, and then it's a date, so we need those guys, the octothorps, right? Log date, okay? And let's continue it down below. Food date time is less than log date plus one. And close that up. Okay, I'm gonna tab this over so they're underneath each other. Oh, that looks pretty. And then what we gotta do, me.filter on equals true. Make sure the filter is enabled, okay? So food date time is greater than or equal to today, whatever the date happens to be, and less than but not equal to tomorrow. That way you don't get midnight tomorrow, okay? And yes, this is much better than using between. I got a whole video on why between doesn't always give you the right values. I'll put a link to that down below as well. All right, save it, give it a debug compile once in a while. Let's close it, close it, open it, and everything's gone except today's dinner. See, our filter's on. And your user can turn the filter off if they want to and manually do stuff, but we're gonna trust our filters. Now, it'd be nice to have little buttons we can use to move back and forth, right? Or be able to just type a value in here and go to that date, okay? Let's start with that last one first. Let's go into here, design view. Go to this guy's after update event. Why does this keep moving over? Get back over there. And then dot, dot, dot. And in here, what do you gotta do in the after update event? All you have to do is say, update filter. So if they change the value, it'll just refresh the filter. Save it, come back out, meow. Close it, open it. Let's say I wanna see tomorrow, just click in there. Yeah, when you're in edit mode, when you go to edit thing, it's the same problem we have down here that we're gonna fix probably tomorrow. Um, when you click on this, it goes back to your default format, your default short date format. That's okay. Um, that's fine for editing. I'll just go to 10 and hit tab. And there it reapplies the new filter. See, nice and easy. But you might want to use buttons too, make it easier to go back and forth between the days. So let's throw some buttons on here. Grab a button, drop it here, cancel the wizard. I'm going to put like a little left accent sign there. Just like that, maybe bold it. Slide it up next to here, make it nice and small, like that. And let's name, I'm gonna have to drag it down a tiny bit, right there, all right, perfect. Let's name this guy, what do we wanna call this guy? Let's call this uh, back one day button. And then right click, build event. Real simple in here, right? Log date equals log date. Minus one. Remember your date math, right? A, a day is a unit of one. So you go back seven, it's a week. Okay. And then update filter. Save it. Let's check it out. Make sure it works. Ready, go. Oh, look at that. See, the date's changing. And it updates the filter. Now we just got to go the other way. Design view. Copy, paste. Slide it over here. Slide to the right. Okay. This will be our forward one day button and the code is going to be very similar in fact i'm going to move this up top so they're next to each other it puts them in there in alphabetical order sometimes and sometimes it doesn't so that's weird we're just going to copy that paste it there and instead of minus one we're going to go plus one save it come back over here close it open it back a day back a day back a day forward 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 See? Real easy. Now, we can do buttons too for weeks. Sometimes I want to go back a week too. I want to see what did I, you know, if it if it's a Sunday and I know it's my cheat, well, I don't I don't like calling them cheat days. Let's call it a refeed day, right? You if you're in a calorie deficit all week, you know, your body might go, ah, you might get into some metabolic stress there and your body's going to hang on to that fat cuz it thinks it's starving. So, at least once a week I like to eat at least my maintenance level of calories, if not a little more. Nothing wrong with that. So I might wanna say, well, what did I do last Sunday, right? So let's add week buttons on here. I'm gonna copy this guy, copy, paste, slide it over here, and let's make this two little guys, All right? Name of the button, back one week button. Now, so since I've got the same code essentially copied twice here, I don't wanna have the same stuff four times. Let's turn this into an event function. Right, watch this. Let's say private function 
change log date, and I'm gonna send into it num days as a long. Now, it's gotta be a function, so it works, but it doesn't have to return a value. I think we've talked about, see, I'm having a hard time keeping track of what topics I've talked about in this series, because this series is so long. <laughs> okay, so if you haven't, if you don't know about that, th I think we covered it already. Anyways, um, so in here, we're gonna say log date equals log date, log date, log date plus num days and then update filter and someone's beaming in okay so now we just send into here a one or a minus one or a seven or 30 if you want to go back and forth that way all right now we can actually get rid of these and see i wanted to i want to do that first so you get appreciation for why i make the function Okay, now we don't need all this extra duplicated code in our module. Okay, save it, and now we're just gonna come out to these buttons. Let me make this fourth button while I'm thinking about it. Copy, paste, come over here like this. Do a little bit of that. Name the button, still gotta name the button. Forward one week button. But now what we can do is we can change the event from an event procedure to a event function. And these guys, have there's gone already because we just um, we just deleted it in the code. But watch this. Select all of these buttons. I got all four of those selected. I was holding down the shift key in case you missed it. Now, in the on click event, we can write this for all of them. Watch this. Equals and then the name of our function. Change log date and just put in here like zero for now. All right, hit tab. Now that sets that for all four of those buttons. So now all you gotta do is individually go to each one of these buttons. So this guy is gonna be a one. This guy is gonna go plus seven. So just put a seven in there. This guy is gonna be a minus one. And that guy is gonna be what? Anybody, anybody? Bueller, 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 minus seven, right? Okay, save it, close it. Open it, ready? Plus one, plus one, plus one. Minus one, minus one, minus one. Plus a week, plus a week, plus a week. Minus, minus, minus a week. That's pretty cool stuff, huh? All right, nice and easy. Um, a today button is kind of nice too. All right, I'll throw it over here. But sometimes it's nice to just quickly get back to today. We'll put a T in there for today. And it's just a matter of, um, of training, or you can make a tool tip. So when they hover over it, I was like, what does that mean? Uh, for this, you will need an event procedure though. So we're just gonna do that. And then in the on click, go boop, like that. Oh, I didn't name it. See, command 83, gotta fix that first. Let's name it first so Alex doesn't yell at us. Save it and then give it a good name. Call it today button. Now I can go right click build event and say log date equals today and then update filter. See, save it, close it, close it. So now if you're bouncing around, you're who knows where, you just hit the today button and you go right back to today's date. You could do it tomorrow, you could do a, you know, you can add month buttons if you really want to, just use the date add function and add it with months. I'm not gonna get into that because I seldom wanna go back and forth a whole month. But don't forget, you can also click in here and use a little date picker too. Oops, yeah, there it is. It's, you gotta be careful because it's up there. That's why I left a little space there because it's right up there. Uh, I wish the access team left us an option to have this appear inside the text box instead of always outside the text box. That'd be a great feature. I think it's on my list of stuff to, to tell them about, but oh, who knows? Uh, <laughs> if you want to leave more space here with these buttons, that's fine too. In fact, I think I will just to accommodate that little button. I'm going to slide these over a little bit and then I'm going to slide these over too. You know what? That'd be perfect. Well, no, I really don't like the way it looks, but I think it's better to accommodate that button. Did I go too far? Oh, see, these are just a hair too far. I'm counting, I'm counting pixels. All right, save it, or twips, or whatever they are. That's not too bad. Now you got very clear access to that. And then tap, there you go. All right, looks pretty good. You could put a remove filter button up here, but I don't think it's necessary for this form. Just tell them just to click on that for this one. And then if you want to go back to just today, just click the T and it reapplies the filter for you.
All right. I think the next problem we're going to get to is if you want to modify the time over here. It's kind of confusing now if you click on that because it goes back to, like I said, the default short date format, which will also show it like that with the time. I want to be able to just see the time in here when I edit that. So we'll, we'll tackle that tomorrow. So that's about it for today. That's part 25. I hope you guys are learning something. Post a comment down below. Let me know. Make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff. So I'll see you tomorrow. Live long and prosper, my friends. Have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.